I'm using denatured alcohol as my solvent. So the advantage of doing an underpainting, for those of you who have done it, is that the underpainting dissolves the pastel binder and it adheres the pastel to the paper so it will no longer smear. That's the advantage of doing an underpainting. The, there is no disadvantage of doing an underpainting. So. So I know you probably can't see this. I'm gonna blow it up real big. John, could you turn the light around on me? Yeah. Now it's gonna blast on the screen. That's a that's a nice screen. Great. So uh, so I'm talking about the darkest value in every given section on this picture. This picture of granite dentals. Good. This is kind of a commission. It's kind of a a hopeful commission. <laughs> um, my gallery owner says if I do a pan or mini panorama of Granite Dells, this guy will buy it. So good. <laughs> He's probably lying. But uh, <laughs> so there are three separate layers here: one, two, and three. There are three dark values. The dark value is, is not necessarily the blackest value, but it could be. Um, so in this case, it's this one, this value here, and in this case, it's just any value back here because they're all exactly the same. They get a little darker towards the sky, but that's just a photograph dark back. So any color in here is the same. There's not really much value differentiation. Um, the darks are just about the same as the lights, so I can use whatever I want. And then down here, there's a great deal of differentiation, and that's the, basically the definition of atmospheric perspective. As things get further away, the contrast reduces, the <coughs> lights get darker, the darks get lighter, and everything turns blue. Or as you could be more specific and say, the warmer colors are absorbed by the atmosphere more quickly than the cool colors, so they look more blue. Um, and then the water is just the same value. And so I'm just gonna cover this entire thing with one Smear of color, not not thickly, but I, I don't. I'll never mind. I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> so again, denatured alcohol, and I cheated last night, and I already figured out what stick I was gonna use. Normally, I would just try different sticks, but um, for the bottom part, I'm going to use black with some brown mixed into it. And I'm not afraid of black. Um, I think it's a great color when used um, in moderation. Um, the big problem people I've seen with my students when they're washing stuff in is they don't go dark enough. They're afraid to go too dark, uh, which is possible to do. If I use black in this section or this section, that would be a big problem. Um, but if I use it down here, that's not a problem. So I put down black. This is also the only time you'll ever see me scribble. <laughs> um, I remember seeing a demo at APAA several years ago. And an uh, artist, she's probably in here right now. I don't know, probably. I'm in trouble. But she, she started her demonstration saying, I only have three words for you. And that's scribble, scribble, and scribble. And I thought, yes. That's perfect. Is that you? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What's your circle? Uh, you are 400 grit mounted to a piece of foam coat. Uh, I use the 400 because it's the best combination for me of texture and control. Um, I use, I have used 500 in, for portraits. Um, I've never used anything finer than that. And I tried using 320 for a while, but found that it was just too uh, too crunchy. But it's whatever works for you. So. Uh, 
So I'm going to wash that in. Usually I start with the lightest, which is probably do that. Sheesh, I don't remember what that was. It's a three. So we'll find a three. Any old three. Perfect. Now remember, this is the darkest value. So um, everything that will go on top of this is going to be lighter than what I'm doing right now. And these blobs are from trying out a new adhesive, and um, it didn't work very well. So I may have a problem here. It's going to go in the, in the garbage. Maybe. But I won't have much of it done, so it doesn't matter. That's so that. Are you talking about the adhesive of the paper for the health club? Yeah, I just use spray mount of some various kind. I found that Gorilla Glue is spray mount is great, and 3M spray mount is terrible. <laughs> this is 3M. 3M comes out like silly string, it gets oh, everywhere. Oh, uh, Gorilla Glue comes out as a spray. It's great. How do you spell it? Gorilla? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, so what I'm shooting for at this stage with painting is to make a really crappy looking watercolor, and, and that's what it's going to look like, especially the crappy one. So, three, one, I'll just Now you can mix colors when you're doing this kind of stuff. So if I want to make it a little more neutral, I can just take a uh, gray of the same value. I can't see anything down here. So uh, you can take a neutral gray and mix it right in to neutralize a little bit. Um, if you think it's too colorful for a shadow, which this probably is. But I'm ignoring the light hitting these rocks completely uh, because at this stage, it's all about the darkness. Something fun. Um, if I'm doing a painting with a lot of sky, I will wear a mask um, because of the dust you're creating. But normally, because I use an excruciatingly light touch when I paint, which I always recommend people do, um, because the, 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 the longer you can avoid filling in the tooth of the paper, the better off you are. As soon as you fill, off the, fill up the tooth of the paper, Instead of getting this nice sound, it just starts going. You're done. <laughs> you can't put anything else on top of that. So it's all over. So I try to avoid that as long as possible. Hence the scribble. Hence the scribble. This is the only time I get scribbles. Let me have some fun. I don't get to do it any other way. So. Um, the reason being, I try to make every stroke I make, I 
visualize myself using a brush. Uh, that's how I learned from Bill William Osner. He treats his pastels like a brush head. So his paintings are very impressionistic. Um, they're very good. Um, so I learned that way and it made sense. So I still try and do that. So I'm always trying to create edges and forms. That's what I'm working on. I'm creating volumetric form with controlled edges. If you're scribbling, good luck. Um, Cause scribbling just goes out of control. And then if you have a line, a bunch of lines in your painting, those become shapes to the viewer. And then they have to have some kind of meaning to them, to me. And I just find it, I'm glad people do it that way. I think it works great in the hands of someone who really knows what they're doing. Uh, just for me, it's just not, not gonna happen. Uh, but I don't begrudge them their style. Most pastelists are scribblers. Um, that is the most common style because most people come to pastel because they consider it to be a drawing medium. And most contests you enter consider it to be a drawing medium as well. Um, I consider it to be a painting medium. For me, painting is about color, form, and shape. And painting is, or drawing is about line. And uh, that's a pretty simplistic definition, but I'm sticking with it because that way I can downgrade scribblers and make myself look better. <laughs> so, So I'm just using denatured alcohol and a very soft artificial sable brush that I get at some chain store that doesn't cost very much. Because you don't want to be using a good brush for this because the sandpaper will um, disintegrate them. And then I dab it with a paper towel to give myself a start on texture. So I don't want it to be completely uniform. I just want it to have some, some fun texture in there. It looks like, so these always go on darker when they're wet and then they get lighter as they dry. I always make sound effects when I paint too, so forgive me. Some pastels work better than others at underpainting. Um, some of this blue is actually a mountain vision, and I'm kind of on the fence about them. They're okay. Not my favorite. But I have I have examples of almost every pastel company, um, and there's some I just stopped using. I don't use Sennelier or Schmincke because they're too crumbly. Too soft, they're a waste of money. Um, I don't use pastel pencils because they're too hard and too hard to sharpen and they're a waste of money. So I can get a sharper edge with a new pastel than I can with a colored pencil or a pastel pencil, much sharper, just by snapping it. So I can always come over this when I'm working, and when I'm actually working on the sections, I can use something darker. Um, my favorite tool for making things darker is a simple, sharp charcoal pencil. You can use a, this is not a sharp one, but um, <laughs> you can use this very lightly to darken down a value without changing its color, just by very lightly going over it, you can make it slightly darker. It's great. It's also good for doing lines if you ever need a line, which I don't. Um, it's I use it all the time. So remember, don't get your hopes up at this stage of the painting. It's not going to look like much. And I'm going to stall it out until I'm done. And I don't have to do anything else because I have it on. So I did what colors I'm going to use. I note that I'm kind of staying away from the edges of the different forms. That way I don't have to uh, redraw as much. If you uh, 
if you just make a big blob and cover everything up in one fell swoop, then um, you'll have to redraw to find your forms again. And I prefer not to do that if I can avoid it. Um, also, my brush strokes tend to follow the face of the plane I'm trying to describe. So if I'm doing a flat cliff like these, I go up and down. If you go this way, then you're describing a different plane. And if you do just swirl it around, um, then you may or may not have it describing what you're trying to do. Um, and I try and keep the brush really wet because I'm not trying to put this on super thick. You know, sometimes it goes on super thick. So I'll just keep wetting it down and diluting it. And because this is water, I'm trying to go sideways to describe the flat plane of the water, even though it's not really looking that much. But again, I'm going to go over this a million times. It doesn't really matter. So far, so good on the glue. I did spray this with workable fixative last night after I did the drawing. Hopefully, not have this show up in the finished picture. Um, hopefully, it'll work out. <clears throat> So when this is dry, um, it doesn't come off, which is what you're looking for. And that's one of the reasons I like UART because it, um, it seems to respond to this kind of treatment the best. Um, I have some of my students have jumped from paper to paper in the past because they'll buy a pack from somebody and then they'll want to use it all. And, and every paper has different working characteristics. So if you get used to one kind of paper and then you switch brands, then basically you have to start over and you're going to have different problems. And some papers um, are notoriously bad at uh, alcohol. So I tend to not use those. In fact, I don't use anything else. Um, even though I still have a roll of Wallace paper, I don't use it anymore because it's too inconsistent. Um, good paper, yeah, but I think this is better. I'm used to it now anyway. So that's the underpainting. That's all there is to it. Um, so now if I just pick, you, then you can start controlling how much you open this up or darken it down. So I'll show you how to darken it down real quick. If you want to darken a section um, that's too light. I try and use these peel and sketch pencils because I like the way they work. They're very dark. Um, they don't leave too much gunk on them, but they're very flimsy. They break easily. Uh, and I'll throw it on the floor later. So if I wanted to start making this just a little darker, I am. Make it just a little darker. And that's all I would use this for to make it just a little darker. I wouldn't use it to make it really dark, although I could, but I don't want to make it too dark for that particular section. Same thing over here. It's still darker than the underpainting there. And if I need to get darker than that, I would use the unison black, which um, I've actually tested this. Um, when I used to teach at the art store, we would take I had access to all their junk, so we would test blacks from uh, everything to find the darkest dark. This is the darkest dark of anything. Oil, acrylic, watercolor, charcoal, pencils, anything, ink, this is the darkest. New pastel. This thing is so dark. It's too dark. Um, 
So, yeah. Um, so that's kind of it. Um, Anyway, so what I would do from here on out is I would just take progressively um, slightly lighter colors and start opening up stuff like this. And then I would go lighter still. I'd end up maybe not there. I'd probably end up something in this range here, maybe as far as the value. Maybe <laughs> haven't thought it out. Hey, John. Yeah. Do you do your sky first? Always. Yes, I always work from the top down. And um, the reason you want to do your sky first is because you want to actually, if I was doing the sky for realies, which I'm not, but um, if I was, I'd start over here, which will give me a good opportunity to see if this is going to work. <laughs> That's the signal that Sharon wants me to be done. <laughs> So this I would blend and it's going to be okay. And then I would actually pull this down into my mountain. I'm just guessing where the sky is. It doesn't really matter. And then I'll blend it in, go to the paper. And then I can take um, blue green four. If I want, that's not it. That's the problem with having them arranged this way. You can't always find the sticks you're looking for because they're not next to each other anymore. And until you've memorized the arrangement, that's assuming students put them back or I put them back. <laughs> In this case, I don't think it's even here. It's not. So blue green four is gone missing. Wait. There it is. <laughs> then get put back. So you can blend it in. So this way you can get a gradation between three and four, which will give you a more uh, subtle transition, which is great. And then if you want to make it more colorful, you can use blue green nine, which is going to give it a different more intense color when you blend it in. But I'm always looking for the subtle colors. I'm not ever going for the home run. I rarely use a pure color. I always, almost always blend it with something, but not always. But. Can you tell us why the sky started first? What is the rationale for that? Um, if you put pastel down on the mountains first and then do the sky, mm -hmm. some of that chalk from the uh, chalk, some of that pen. <laughs> Some of the pastel from the sky is going to bleed up it. Nope, start over. Some of the pastel yeah. from the mountain is going to bleed up into the sky and make it dark and muddy looking. Mm -hmm. So by doing the lighter color first, in this case, and then going over it with a darker color, you can get the edge control you're looking for. That's why. Because um, there's nothing worse than working on some big sky and then just have a blob of black chalk go up into the sky. That just stinks. You can cover it up and get rid of it, but it just takes more time. More questions, please. Oh. <laughs>